and uh, I guess let's let's just uh, stop here since since our time is up. Well, maybe maybe let's continue a little bit. I'll just very quick. In the visual, liquid solid interface, just one simple one between we talk about uh, between green boundaries, the same solid material between surface, the bulk of the material and the vacuum. And another type of interface is between the solid and uh, liquid. Okay. And one type of this solid uh, liquid interface is so-called atomically flat, which means at atomic scale, very small scale, you look at that interface, it's very, very flat. And for these material, they quite often satisfy this relationship. The ratio between LF, the latent heat for F for fusion, the latent heat for fusion, which means when the material, when it's melt, it's give out uh, certain heat. That amount of heat divided by the what? Melting point is greater than four times of gas constant. For those type of material, you would find the, okay that interface between the liquid and the solid is quite often very, very flat, atomically flat. Which means if you have an AFM, somehow if you can do an AFM, it's really, really flat at that interface. Okay? And uh, these would happen for material like silicon, germanium, or some certain non-metals. In comparison, for many metals, we call them so-called diffuse interface between the solid and the liquid. Which means what? At uh, atomic scale, if we somehow can get it, at an atomic scale, it would be one atom up, one atom down. It's just up and down, up and down at atomic scale, diffuse interface. And the, that is the case for most metals. When the latent heat for fusion, the amount of heat that give out during melting divided by melting point is roughly gas constant. And this is the case for most metals. For most metals, they would have these types of diffuse interface. Okay. And uh, one thing, one last thing we want to talk about would be the relationship between some values. Gamma SV, the interfacial energy between what? Solid and gas or vacuum, okay? Gamma SL, the interfacial energy between solid and uh, liquid. Gamma LV, the interfacial energy between liquid and uh, the vapor phase, okay? And uh, quite often, people find out the relationship between SL. The interfacial energy between solid and the liquid is roughly half of what? B for green boundary. Half of green boundary energy. Okay. And then earlier we said the green boundary energy is roughly one third of what? Surface energy. Which in the end, we would have, okay, we time this together. The solid uh, liquid interfacial energy is relatively small compared with surface surface energy, right? As we between solid and vapor or solid and uh, vacuum, the between solid and the liquid and the surface energy, solid and the liquid is actually pretty small, pretty small. Okay, and then the consequence is, okay, if I'm going to look at the melting of a material, liquid over alpha phase, the top is vapor, we would have the balance of the interfacial or surface tension term. Solid vapor is trying to expand, shrink in this way, and then liquid vapor is trying to shrink that way, and between L and alpha, that's our solid uh, liquid. We would have something like this. But because of the relationship, quite often, the solid vapor term is much larger than these other two added up together. The solid vapor term is much larger than solid liquid and similar much larger than liquid vapor. As a result, what would happen is which way would the interface go? Towards right. Make sense? If the solid vapor, the right, the one pointing towards right is much larger, the interface would go towards right. Means what? It means the liquid has a tendency, when it's melt, has a tendency to spread out over the entire solid surface. 
which means okay when you think of an ice how does it melt the ice melt all around onto its surface everything out on the surface become liquid everywhere would be covered by liquid water okay